Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Vim motions, which basically means how do I get around in Vim? So if you're having trouble getting around or just want to see some nice shortcuts or best practices when navigating and going really fast vertically and horizontally, then check out this video and I'll show you all the cool stuff. All right. So to get started with the basic movements are H to go left and L to go right. And let's see if I can get up to a different line. Uh, L to go to the right hand side, H to go to the left hand side, J to go down, K to go up. And this will do single movements. So one letter over to one of the directions or one line up or down. So this is kind of the basic way to get around. It takes a long time. Usually if things are working well, then you can hold it and it'll go up several lines. So this is something you should be comfortable with, especially whenever you have other shortcuts and need to move over just one more line or just one more character, then you can use this. So start with this, move around with H, J, K, and L, which is your home row. And then if you wanna do other things, so you can use what's called numeric arguments. So if I wanted to move, let's say down three lines, well, J is gonna move me down. And so I can say three J and it'll move me down three the lines. If I do this again, 3J, it'll move me again, three lines down. Uh, the same thing applies for horizontal movements. So like 3L would go to the right hand side and we can see that go that way. This is another way to combine those. So if you want to move several lines down, you can do that without pressing J several times or holding the J key. So this is a nice way to jump around. Uh, one of the, the best things about this is turning on relative numbers, which you can see in my example here. The line that I'm on is the actual line number, but if I wanted to go four up, then you can see that I hit 4K and I'm up there on that line. So try relative numbers if you like jumping around using numbers. The next thing we'll talk about here is jumping within a line. It's really common to need to go left and right between a line and you don't wanna do L and H all the time. So doing underscore will put you in the very front of the line. Zero will put you in the very, very beginning of the line. So remember, you know, zero is at the very beginning. Underscore will give you the first text in that line. And then dollar sign will put you at the very end. Those are all nice ways to jump around quickly, especially if you're in the middle of a line. But if you need to get into insert mode, another way to do that is uh, capital A and it'll put you into insert mode, very end of the line. Uh, hitting escape will get you out of insert mode. And then capital I, which looks a lot like L, will actually put you right where that first character is in the line. And again, into insert mode. So if you don't wanna you know, reach up to the top row where you're doing like the underscore and the zero or the underscore and the dollar sign, then you can kind of hack around it by doing uppercase A or an uppercase I. Another way to move really quickly across a line or by words is to use the W key to go forward. So W, you can see, goes me forward and, and I land at the beginning of the word. This is also alphanumeric. Any of the like parentheses or curly braces, those all count as characters. Whereas the double quote, that does not count as a character. So we're doing by words. If you want to go faster, then you can do capital W and that will actually jump for spaces. So like, let's go to a, um, a line that has some spaces. The so W will go to each character within this little parenthesis here, whereas capital W will skip over those spaces for you. So if you want to jump, you know, to wherever the spaces are, are uh, not in, so like jump over those spaces, do capital W and then W to go whenever you're actually wanting to land on those uh, other intermediate characters. B, as you've probably seen here, will go backwards. And the same thing applies if you do a capital B, it'll jump over those breaks and jump to the beginning of the characters as well. One of the things that I've noticed here is if I'm going all the way to the end of a line, usually I'm highlighting. So let's say, you know, I go here, I'm in uh, visual mode, and then I wanna go all the way to the end of the line. Well, sometimes I'll overshoot it. And this is really common whenever you're using W. Like you wanna get that last character, but a lot of times you overshoot it. What I've found is using E, which will put you at the end, 
usually lets you not overshoot it as frequently. And the same thing applies, like it'll jump over spaces if you do a capital E. So if you're wanting to highlight more things, use the capital letters. And what I found is I actually use E a lot more than W, just because I wanna usually highlight all the way to the end of a line, grab something, uh, if I'm highlighting everything in a line, there's another way to do that. But just for, you know, going to the end of any of these words, E is going to be really useful for that. Now that we've talked about going along a line, let's talk about going vertically. If we do curly brace, so if we do the left hand side, we will go up. So what I'm doing is I'm holding shifts and the brackets. So this will go up. And then if I hit the other one, it will go down. The nice thing about this is it jumps pretty quickly. You can go through a lot of different code, but the downside of this is that it's very dependent on your coding style or your coworkers coding style. So if all of this is combined into one block, then I'm gonna jump all the way over it. So let's see, let's delete this other one. Uh, I'll jump all the way over this entire function if there's no spaces in it. It's dependent on that. What I found is I actually use control D to go down, which is which takes you down a half screen. There's other ones, I believe it's like control F that'll take you down like a full screen, but it's pretty jarring to see that. So I usually do control D to go down and control U to go up. It's actually kind of nice to remember that U is up, D is down. So try that instead of doing the brackets. You can still use the brackets. There's uh, they work well, but in my experience, I'd really recommend doing the control D and control U to jump around quickly. Once you've adjusted the screen, sometimes your cursor is in the wrong spot. So like mine is all the way down here at the bottom. If I wanted to go all the way to the top within this screen, I can do a capital H and it'll take me all the way up. If I wanted to be in the middle, so I can do a capital M, you can see I'm in the middle. And then if I wanted to be on the lower part of the screen, I could do a capital L and that'll jump me all the way down to the bottom. So if you if you need to, after you've done like a control D, you know, you're all the way down or you're going up and you need to be in the middle, then like a capital M puts you right there, uh, then you can modify things however you need to. So those are nice to have, uh, especially if you wanna jump around. The cool thing is you can use a numeric version of this. So let's say I wanted to be, you know, five lines down from the top. So I could do like a five H and I'm five lines down from the very top. If I wanted to be in the middle, but maybe two lines down, I can do a two capital M. And there you go, I'm right there in the middle. You know, if I don't know exactly which, you know, line number I wanna to jump to, then that is really useful to jump to. Other ways to jump to the very top or the very bottom of the file, if you do GG, that'll take you to the very top, the first line, and then capital G will take you all the way to the very end of the file. If you need to jump, you know, to the very end of like a JSON file, you can go to the top, GG, go into visual mode, capital G, and then highlight something. You can delete the whole file or whatever manipulations you need to have. So G and GG are very useful to have. Last but not least, the old trusty line number jump. So if I wanted to jump to like line 12, then here I am, I'm right here on line 12. If I wanted to jump to line 13, then I can jump there. I'm on line 13. Uh, you know, I'm just jumping around. So if you see exactly what line number you want to jump to within the file, which also works in uh, IntelliJ if you're using IdeaVim, then you can jump specifically to that line number and do your manipulations. It's kind of, you know, hard to know when to jump ex exactly to which line. Like I don't memorize all the line numbers for all the files that I'm in. So doing relative jumps is, is usually what I do. There's also other tips and tricks, but you know that's one way to, to jump around. If you don't want to write the colon in front of it, then you can do a 12 and capital G and that'll do the same thing. So jumping around exactly to line numbers lets you do that exactly. One of the things we should talk about though is why 99% of y'all have not subscribed. Like what is going on? Hit the subscribe button already. But really, if you like this video, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It helps the algorithm. It lets me know that Vim is something that you care about. And I'll see you in the next one. And hopefully it's another Vim video. See ya.